Hi, today we will take a look at Node-RED. We will link all the IoT devices in our home and access them conveniently from a user interface. As an example we will use my main switch, the washing machine controller and the prototype of the weather station which we will refine next episode. This should provide enough sensors and actuators for an overview. We will run the Node-RED server on a Raspberry Pi which is also running the MQTT broker from the beginning of this series. Check out the home automation playlist if you haven't seen it yet. All the comments, codes, flows and parts shown in this video can also be found on the project page linked in the description. As teased in the last episode, Node-RED is already pre-installed on the Raspberry and Stretch image which we are using. It can be found in the programming menu. However, it is lacking npm, the node packet manager, which is needed to add any useful extension we use here. But no worries. We open a terminal and simply execute update node.js and node.red. This script updates everything and also installs npm. It can take half an hour to complete. Node.red can be accessed by anyone in the local network, so it's recommended to add some password protection. This takes a little bit longer to set up, but it's optional. We change to the Node-RED home directory using cd tilde slash dot node minus red and install the Node-RED admin package. sudo npm install minus g Node-RED admin. This installation took even longer than the update from before. Now we can use the admin tool to generate password hashes for our users so they don't appear readable in the config files. We type node-red admin hash minus pw. Then type the password and return. This password hash can now be copied in our user configuration. We open another terminal and edit the node-red settings using the nano editor. We search for the admin auth setting and comment the block in. Now we can change the username, remove the old hash and copy and paste the password hash from the other terminal into the editor using the right mouse button functions of the terminals. Since users is a list we could also add more users like this. The permissions can also be set read only by using read instead of asterisk. I don't need another user so I remove it. To also protect the user interface we want to create, we also need to set the credentials for the HTTP node auth. Save using Ctrl O and exit with Ctrl X. Now node red should be password protected. Let's configure here a last thing. We want the node red server to start up automatically when the Raspberry Pi is powered up. This can be easily achieved using the command sudo system control enable node red service. And we are done here. I simply reboot the Raspberry to be sure everything works as expected on startup. Let's go graphical. node red is a graphical development environment which can be accessed from the browser. The address is the IP of the Raspberry at port 1880. The first time it will ask you the username and password we just set up. Before we start we check the menu. We got the latest version and since we installed npm, the manage palette menu entry is also available. We enter it and get the option to install extensions on the second tab. To be able to design a user interface for our home automation, we need to add the Node-RED dashboard extension. Once that is finished installing, we finally can start exploring. On the left side, we have all the available nodes. Input, Output, Function, Raspberry, and the newly added dashboard nodes. We can simply grab a node and drag it into the flow. On the right side we have the info tab which provides very useful infos for the selected node. The debug tab for our debug output and the also newly added dashboard tab to construct our user interface. We take a debug output node and drag using the left mouse button from the output connection to the input connection. Now we need to tell the MQTT input node where to subscribe. Double clicking on it opens its settings. We didn't set up our MQTT broker yet, so click here to edit. We type the address here. Localhost would also work since our broker is also running on this Raspberry. And we also add the username and the password. Then the topic where to subscribe. We can use the hash wildcard to get all the messages from the weather station. 
set the quality of service you like and done. Node Red works by sending message objects between the nodes. These messages contain at least a topic and a payload. Our debug node prints out the payload of the message, which will be the MQTT data received from the subscription. Our changes to the flow are not effective yet. Those small circles indicate that there are changes that need to be deployed, which is done by pressing on the deploy button. Now the changes take effect and our messages start to be displayed in the debug tab. It works! To stop flooding the output we can stop it pressing the small button at the node. One important node is function. We can drag it on the connection to put it between. The function node executes JavaScript to manipulate messages. It receives a message object and can return one which will be sent to the receivers. In this case we can filter the messages by the topic and forward only the temperature with added degree C to the payload. It works! The function node can also store data in the global context object which can be often seen in my flows. Now let's create a user interface. To display the temperature we can simply take a text node. The inputs and outputs can be connected to as many other nodes as you like. The small triangle indicates there is a crucial setup missing in the node. In the options we can see there needs to be a group assigned. So we need to create a UI structure in the dashboard tab first. The first level in the hierarchy is the tab. We create one. Then we can add the group to the tab. Now we can assign our text to the group. The data can be formatted using an AngularJS template. Check out the info tab for details. Giving the node a distinct name helps to identify it. Let's see the result. The UI can be found at the same address as node red with edit slash UI at the end. And there is our output. As we want to add more functionality, it's probably a good idea to add additional flows. I will keep the first one for the weather station and add another one by clicking at the plus up here. Let's try to publish to MQTT now to control actuators or simply inject some information. We add the topic to which we like to publish. This is the one of my main switch. Now we add a switch UI element. The UI controls have also an input and are able to reflect the state they receive. Everything in the UI is always updated instantly. Since the switch controls my lava lamp, we can try creating a new tab in the UI. Also adding a group indicating the room. And we attach the control to the group. The appearance can also be changed to custom icons. The data sent by the switch can be adjusted here. My main switch expects a 1 for on and 0 for off. Switching to the info tab we can find all the details about the node, for example where to find the custom icons. Let's deploy and test it. Now that we have two tabs this menu appears. We can switch to the light tab and can switch my lava lamp on and off if I hadn't forget to set the label correctly. Let's check out some other probably important nodes for further development. The inject node can be configured to send a timestamp repeatedly or even at a specific time at specific days. One viewer asked me how to let the Wemos do something at a specific time. This can be a solution. I can set it up here to turn my lava lamp on at 11 o'clock every day. It's also possible to address the Raspberry hardware using node red. For example sending PWM to a pin or receiving I.O. signals from a pin. Let's take a look at the current state of my own automation. I've added the sensors of the weather station and attached them to gauges and charts. And I also created a control for the washing machine attachment which can even start the washing machine at the time we conveniently set using the UI. The flow for the weather station is quite simple. It just connects the MQTT topic to the charts and gauges. Some of the values are smoothed. 
and some other are simply scaled using a function. The washing machine part is a little bit more complicated. Beside a simple reflection of the status LEDs as icons, the timer setup is rather complex, since there is no UI element for time input. I've used the template element with a custom input field. A very interesting note is the audio. It can be used to do text-to-speech even when your phone is locked. I've stored the link to the UI web page as a shortcut on my phone to access it quickly. I turn the notifications on, lock my phone and simulate the finished status LED. Finished washing. Finished washing. Isn't that awesome? And here is how the timer works. I set the start time and activate it. Great! Ok, let's check out two more very useful functions. Both can be found in the menu. The first one is to create subflows. These can be used to create all nodes, which are simply built from other nodes. This way you can reuse reoccurring parts easily in your complex flows. The last function we take a look at today is a simple import-export. This is the easiest way to share our flows. We can select the part we like to export and go to Menu, Export, Clipboard. Here the selected section of the flow can be copied as a JSON object encoded in one string. I share my flows on the project page so you can copy them, import them in your node thread and check out all the details. Now this is out of the way, we can concentrate on the hardware of the weather station in the next episode. The current prototype simply consists of a Wemos with some sensor shields plus a photoresistor. It already uses deep sleep, but this still can be improved a lot. If you can't wait another week, you can check out the link below for the code of the current state and some details about the sensors. I hope this video was at least a little bit informative. I'm personally impressed by the possibilities that open up given those tools. We can simply take it as a prerequisite for all the home automation projects to come. Don't forget to subscribe and share my videos if you like them. See you next time. Bye. You are so intelligent. You are so big.